Hi, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. I'm Jack in the training department. And today we've got a mechanical high limit switch. And this mechanical high limit switch is like what you would see in an oven. Uh, when we look at it, we see right off the side here, I believe what this is telling us is we trip at 300 C. And I think this is telling us we have a range of negative 18. So plus zero, negative 18. Not 100% sure on that, but that's what I think we got going on. Uh, manufacturer of this particular switch, EGO, on the back here. So we've got EGO as the manufacturer and some really just rudimentary labeling here. Not a lot of detail. Uh, taking a look at the outside of it, before we pull it apart, you notice that the probe has been crushed. That's intentional. That was done from the factory. And that is done to make the device more sensitive. By increasing the pressure in the bulb, you can make these very sensitive so they trip in a very narrow range. If you leave the bulb uncompressed or unsqueezed like that, it'll have a, a wider range. So you'll see this commonly on high limits. Couple things to notice, we've got a button, and you can hear it was tripped, and an adjustment screw, a calibration screw. And that calibration screw has been locked down. So from the factory, this thing was assembled and tested and adjusted, and then they locked it down. Now, there are a couple things to talk about with this. The first one is that these can trip on impact. There's a mechanical plate in here, we'll see in a minute. And you can trip these just from, from impact. So if you hit it a particular way, let's see if I can do it here. Yeah, there it went. So impact can trip these. The other thing that can happen with these is you've got electrical circuits that go from top to bottom here. So this is terminal 31. You can see the numbers there. 31 connects to 32. 21 connects to 22, and 11 connects to 12. You can get two of the three legs resetting and the third leg hanging up. So you can lose one of your circuit pads through it, and that can be one of the ways these fail too. So let's take it apart here. Uh, we talked in a previous episode about these star bits, these Torx bits. So I do have my security bit set here. All right, so this is my other bit set. This one goes all the way down. I think this is a T5 or a T6, but let's see. These look like maybe a T10 or a T8. Yeah, so these are a T10. We talked about in a previous episode this bulb system where you use fluid captured in a, a bulb with a cap tube to expand a small bellows. And that's what this is. So this is the bulb, this is the cap tube, and I expect we'll find a, a small bellows in here. So here's our electrical contacts. And you can see that two pieces fell out when we opened that. This was the first one. And this was the second one. All right, so we can see inside here this small small plastic bar just pushes down on each of these terminal connections. And these go to a normally closed position with no external force, right? So when the switch is reset, it's actually not pushing. And then when it trips, it, it opens. So any kind of grease or oil or anything that got down in there could potentially interrupt those contacts, cause high resistance, or cause them to corrode. Now on the other half of the switch is the actual mechanical mechanism. And you can see there's a spring, but it's not clear what else is in there. And the way they put this together, the way they've put this together 
is uh, mechanically fastened. They, they've switched these apart, so we'll have to actually pry this apart. So I'll, I'll be back in a minute. All right, we've once again used the cold chisel to pry apart some mechanical fastenings. So we've knocked loose the back plate, which has this kind of intricate spring mechanism. And then inside, in the front, we've got our small little bellows. And you can see the little bellows up here. And the bellows pushes against this spring-loaded pivot, this plate, which then acts upon this spring-loaded plate. And this is the actual trip mechanism. So when this thing is assembled, it looks like it goes about like that. And you can see there's a... When it's set, it's like this. When it's tripped, so it's, it's holding the contacts open. And when it's not, it's like that, which puts no force on these contacts and lets them stay closed. So when it goes into a trip condition, there's enough force pushed on this point right here by this bellows assembly to cause it to go into this trip position. Now the interesting part is the reset mechanism. When you look at what the button is doing, the button has little teeth almost. And when it goes into a trip condition, it looks like the button is actually grabbing a hold of the, the plate and holding it in that position. And then when you push the release, it lets it return back. I don't know how much further apart we can get this. It'd be interesting to get that bellows out of there. There's a very small screw down inside holding that assembly together. Let me grab a screwdriver. So this very small flathead screw down inside here threads back into this mounting plate. And, and uh, let's see if we can get that apart here. So there's our small little screw. And we've got spring force acting on that, so we've got to be careful that nothing flies out here. There we go. So we popped it over the edge of the little retaining clips that are in there. And there's our spring. And there's our little bellows. If you remember from previous episodes, this looks very similar to what we saw inside of our BJ style thermostat. So we're using the same basic principle here. It looks like this one's actually retained by this little screw, so let's get that broke loose. Yeah, so that little screw was threaded on to the end of this. So this Cap, cap tube, bulb, and bellows assembly is very similar to what we see in other devices like this, mechanical temperature sensing devices. So in fact, let's pull out the bulb here from the uh, BJ. So this is back from episode one. And you can see the bulb and the bellows and the cap tube assembly from this BJ thermostat look almost identical. They're just slightly different in size and in mechanical retention. So this one's got threads in it, whereas this one just has pins. But the, the basic principle and the basic design is pretty much the same. So because of that, we know that this will fail in the same ways that those BJ thermostats fail. If this cap tube becomes kinked or damaged, if this bulb becomes compromised, smashed, bent, or if this bellows were to develop any kind of leak. 
but when that fluid expands, it has to be able to travel all the way back through the cap tube and make the bellows put more pressure on the me mechanism around it. So then the last part of what's down inside here is just the reset mechanism. You can see there's a little spring steel flex plate that acts on this lever. And hopefully by this point you're starting to recognize we're, we're dealing with a lot of simple machines, levers and screws and that sort of thing, all just assembled in different ways to, to do different specific activities. But yeah, that's it. That's the high limit. Pretty neat little setup, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Thanks for joining. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com dot com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.